Indonesian philosophy is a generic designation for the tradition of abstract speculation held by the people who inhabit the region now known as Indonesia. Indonesian philosophy is expressed in the living languages found in Indonesia approximately 587 languages and its national language Indonesian, comprising many diverse schools of thought with influences from Eastern and Western origins, and indigenous philosophical themes. The term Indonesian philosophy originates from the title of a book written by M. Nasroan, in which he traced philosophical elements found in Indonesian culture. Since then, the term has been popular and inspired many later writers like Sunoto, Parmono, and Jakob Sumerjo. Sunoto began the nation's first philosophy department at Gajah Mata University in Yogyakarta. Sunoto, Parmona, and Sumerjo each defined the word Indonesian philosophy differently. Without clearly defining the word, M. Nasroan argued that Indonesian philosophy was neither Western nor Eastern. He pointed to core Indonesian concepts and practices such as Mupakat, Pantan Pantan, Pankasila, Hukam Adat, Gotong Royong, and Kakelwargan Nasroan 1967 to 14, 24, 25, 33, and 38. Sunoto 1987, e, also embraced a culturalist notion of Indonesian philosophy, calling it the cultural richness of our own nation, contained in our own culture. Similarly, Parmono defined it as thought or reflections, which are bound in adat, as well as ethnic culture. Parmono 1985, e. Sumerjo wrote that the philosophy of Indonesian people has never been conceived of. Their philosophical conceptions must be sought after and found out of what they have done. Quote. He added. Indonesian philosophy lies in their daily life behavior and factual result of their activities. The philosophy of Indonesian people lies within their pepita petitia, adat houses, adat ceremonies and rites, old myths, in their dress ornaments, their dances, the music they play, in their weapons, their social system, and so on. Sumerjo 2003-113 the writers above understand Indonesian philosophy as a part of culture and do not make a contrast between philosophy and cultural studies or anthropology. The Indonesian language initially had no word for philosophy as an entity separated from theology, art, and science. Instead, Indonesians have a generic word budaya or kabudayan, which describes the totality of the manifestations of the life of a society. Philosophy, science, theology, religion, art and technology are at once manifestations of a society's life, which are included in the meaning of the word budaya. Indonesians usually use the word budayawan for their philosophers Accordingly, to them, the scope of Indonesian philosophy only comprised those original notions of Indonesian cultural richness. This is understood by Ferry Hadayat, as the poverty of the scope. If Indonesian philosophy only comprised those original ethnic philosophies, it would be very limited. Like other scholars, Ferry widens the scope of Indonesian philosophy so as to include the adapted and indigenized philosophy as influenced by foreign philosophical traditions. This article employs the latter definition. Topic. Schools of thought There are seven schools of thought developing in Indonesia. The categorization of schools is first based on the originality that a certain school contains like ethnic school, secondly based on the influence of great world philosophies that a particular school absorbs and adapts to Indonesian philosophy such as Chinese school, Indian school, Islamic school, Christian school, and Western school and lastly based on a historical chronology such as the post soharto school the following is a sketch of the indonesian schools of thought and their main philosophers topic <inaudible> <inaudible> ethnic school this school takes indonesian ethnic philosophies as its source of inspiration its assumption is mythologies, legends, folklores, the way an ethnic group builds its house and holds its ceremonies, literature it keeps, the epics the ethnic group writes, all bases foundation of its philosophy. This philosophy cannot change, it remains the same, from the beginning to the end of the world, and it is also the good. 
It guides every member of the group to the origin of group creation on Earth in Javanese, Sankan, and the telos of the life the group reaches to in Javanese, Perin, so the member cannot go astray. This school preserves Indonesian ethnic philosophies which are original, since the philosophies had been hold tight by ethnic members before they were encountered with later foreign philosophical traditions. Most of the school's proponents assume that today's Indonesian people are in the position of being blind to their original values. Jakob Sumerjo, for instance, argued that most of today's Indonesians, forget to preserve their original values and, forgetting the past, forgetting the origin, they are like amnesiac people who, ignore their own national history, Sumerjo 2003-23, 25. Consequently, they are alienated, estranged from their mother cultures Sumerjo 2003-53. The failure of Indonesian educational policy, to Jakob, is brought by this blindness to Indonesian original culture Sumerjo 2003-58. Therefore, the necessary task of this school of philosophy is to seek after, recall and revitalize the ethnic original values, since the values are mothers localitas iala ibu manusha and people are fathers of existence balita iala bipak manusha Sumerjo 2003-22. The following are some philosophical notions which this school advocates. Adat For this school of thought, Adat plays very important role. Adat is the main inspiration for ethnic philosophers, as it is the intellectual legacy which belongs to a particular ethnic group. Adat is inherited from an ethnic's forefathers to later generations of the ethnic group. Indonesians believe that Adat is not a human creation, but the spirits and supernatural powers ruling the community. This Adat is very different from what Englishmen call tradition, custom or convention today. Its meaning is not simply wider, but more particularly goes far deeper. It includes everything Englishmen call law nowadays, and it goes much further than law in determining the needs and the actions of individuals and in the community. It ordains the ceremonies of marriage, birth and death, the times and the methods for sowing rice, building a house, praying for rain, and many other things. Economics, politics, philosophy and art all come within its sphere. Indeed, from one point of view, Adat is simply a social expression of the community religion, inasmuch as it is not a human creation, and in its exercise men are still constantly watched over by the spirits and supernatural powers ruling community. Because the ADAT which regulates the entire life of the community is dominated by spirits and supernatural powers, that communal life is inevitably static and deeply conservative. Its roots lay in the obscurity of the past, when the ancestors laid down the ADAT once and for all, or as Manangkabao people say, it doesn't crack with the heat or rot in the rain. In such an environment the word old has a special significance, denoting something venerable, sacred, powerful and full of wisdom Topic myths of origin Among intellectual legacy which the ADAT inherited to Indonesians is a set of myths of origin of creation. The myths are sung and only recently written in important ceremonies held on special occasions of birth, death, marriage, harvest festival, and so on. The Dayak Baniak tribe of East Kalimantan, for example, has a set of myths known as Tempatan. This Tempatan tells myths of origin of universe, world and sky, human and animal creation, plants, water, fire, rain, death, ancestor origin, and some social taboos Michael Hopes and Karaaking 1997-1-19. According to Tempatan, far before humankind had been created, they were two families who inhabited the sky. Of the raw materials used by the sky families to create the earth and the sky, finally the first human came into being. He was married to a woman, who was his own daughter, and had many children, some of whom later became Sinyangs, group of spirits who live in the heavens, responsible for the policing of the most important moral affairs and they are in charge of Adat guardians. The Sinyangs can inflict punishments curses on the incestuous. Their children were not only the human race and spirits, but also animals like wildcats of the forest, bears, ancestor of deer, the pigs of the forest, forefathers of monkey, ancestor of bees, snakes, and many others Michael Hopes and Karaaking 1997-29-41 Pantan 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 is original kind of poem created by Indonesians. It is a four-line poem that consists of two parts, the first two lines are called as Sampiran and the second two lines as Isi. The Sampiran always provides an analogy for the Isi, and it symbolizes a macrocosm for a microcosm. 
As the mythology went, humankind was made of materials from which the sky families created the sky and the world, and Pantan reflects this belief very clearly. The Sampiran represents the sky and the world, while the Issi signifies the humankind. Both between Sampiran and Issi there must be logical correspondence, as they both are symbols of harmony of the nature and humankind Sumerjo 2002-296-324. Below is an example of Pantan, Tuju Hari Dalam Hutan, Air Tak Minam, Nasi Tak Makan, Sahari Tiata Pandong Tuan, Rasanya Susu Tubu D Badant Sampiran, which says in English, seven days in deep forest, no drinking water, no eating rice must have logical correspondence with the Isi, which says no meeting you sir in a day, feels like the body becomes thinner and thinner. The Sampiran says about the suffering one can feel when he is in a deep forest in seven days without drink and food, while the Issi says about the suffering one can feel when he does not meet in a day the lover he really longs or yearns for. The Sampiran, therefore, analogizes the Issi in the suffering of the longing. Topic pepita A pepita is like a proverb or saying. These sayings are part of the ADAT in the sense that they give guidance and instruction to every member of a particular ethnic group to treat others well in the community. It is believed that Pepita were created by ancestors inspired by supernatural powers and spirits Nazro in 1967 The wording of a Pepita is taken from nature, which means that all guidance for people's life must be derived from the laws of nature. Nature has its own laws and it is people's obligation to submit to it. As the myth of origin told, humans were parts of nature, they were made of it, so they had to live in total submission to its laws Nazro in 1967-30. Here are some examples of Pepita, Dalam Laut de Pat Diduga, Dalam Hadi Siapa Tahu we can assume the depth of the sea, but we cannot assume what is in people's hearts teaches very clearly about the danger of assuming what is in people's hearts, for this knowledge can only be obtained by asking the people concerned, not by assuming. Ada Gula, Ada Semit where there is sugar, there is ant teaches the law of causality, in which an effect can be inferred if there is a cause. Malu Bertanya, Sesit D. Jalan if you are shy of asking questions, you will get lost in your way teaches the importance of asking questions in the process of seeking after knowledge, and the like. Topic Adat Social structure It has been stated above that not only did Adat include tradition, custom, convention and law, but it also included a kind of social structure. The social structure bound by a common adat was typified by small-scale communities of people in villages or of nomads wandering over a specific area. These communities were rather like miniature democratic republics. Their headmen were elected from the descendants of the oldest branch of the tribe, and they saw to the needs and interests of the community, assisted by a council of elders. Really important decisions were taken by collective deliberations, called as mupakat. Naturally in a democracy of this type, in which a premium is put on unanimity of opinions, the position of the balai was extremely important. This was the building in which meetings and discussions were held. We can think them as the centers of social life within these small communities the principal duty of the village government was to administer the ADAT handed down from generation to generation, and to settle any disputes that might arise. However, the actual scope of administration within this indigenous Indonesian society was very broad if one compared it to the scope of governmental activity today, it included the regulation of marriage ceremonies, crop cultivation, distribution of the harvest, division of legacies, etc., quite apart from attending to the daily needs of the community Topic Further reading Those books are on Indonesian ethnic philosophies, Lansing, Stephen, 1983. Three Worlds of Bali. Westport, Prager Publishers. ISBN 0-275-91720-7. Arrington, Frederick Carl, 1984. Manners and Meaning in West Sumatra, The Social Context of Consciousness. New Haven, Yale University Press. ISBN 0-300-03159-9. Iceman, Jr., Fred B., 1989. Bali Sekala and Niskala, Volume 1. Essays on Religion, Ritual, and Art. Berkeley and Singapore, Perry Plus Editions. ISBN 0-945971-05-2. Wiccan, Uni Managing Turbulent Hearts, A Balinese Formula for Living. Chicago, University of Chicago Press. ISBN 0-226-89678-1. Tall, Roger, et al., 2000. 
Authority and Enterprise Among the Peoples of North Sulawesi. Leiden, KITLV Press. ISBN 90-6718-145-5. Marazic, Jan Phenomenology of a Puppet Theater. Contemplations on the Art of Javanese Wayang Kulit. Leiden, KITLV Press. ISBN 90-6718-252-4. Chinese school The native Indonesian philosophers held their original philosophies until the coming of Chinese migrants between 1122–222 BC who introduced Taoism and Confucianism to them these two foreign philosophies and the local ones then diffused and penetrated, so mixing that they could not be separated again One of the remnants of this diffused philosophy, which is still practiced by all Indonesians to date, is the Confucian notion of Shao pinyin, Shao, Shao Indonesian, Minghormati Orangechua. The notion teaches that people must respect their parents above other things. They should prioritize their parents before giving priority to others. The Chinese school seems to have been primarily developed by a few Indonesians of Chinese ethnicity. Nevertheless, its contribution to the Indonesian philosophical tradition is very significant. Sun Yat-senism, Maoism, and Neo-Maoism are important philosophies that were widespread all over Indonesia in the early 20th century, together with the great growth of the Indonesian Communist Party PKI Suryatanata 1990-15. The main philosophers of this school, among others, are, Tjoe Bo San, Kui Hing Jiat, Lim Kon Hian, Kui Kek Beng, and Tan Ling Djie. Further reading These books cover the Chinese contribution to the Indonesian politico-philosophical tradition. Hyde Hughes, Mary F. Summer, 1964. Peranakan Chinese Politics in Indonesia. New York and Ithaca, Cornell University Press. Suryatanata, Leo, 1976. Peranakan Chinese Politics in Java. Singapore, Institute of Southeast Asian Studies. ISBN 981-210-360-0. Suryatanata, Leo, 1997. The Political Thinking of the Indonesian Chinese 1900-1995. Singapore, Singapore University Press. ISBN 9971-69-201-5. Indian School The diffusion of philosophies continued with the coming of Hindu Brahmins and Buddhists of Indian origin in 322 BC to 700 AD. They introduced Hinduism and Buddhist cultures to the native culture, and the native Indonesian culture reciprocated by synthesizing the two into a combined version, known as Tantrayana. This is clearly shown in the building of Borobudur Temple by Sailendra dynasty in 850 AD Rabindranath Tagore, an Indian philosopher who visited Borobudur for the first time, described the temple as un-Indian, since the relics engraved on it represented workers dressed in native Javanese style. He also observed that the native Javanese dances inspired by Indian epics were not similar to Indian dances, although those dances of the two countries had a common source in the same Indian well. Hindu and Buddhism—two philosophies that contradict each other in India— as well as Javanese local philosophy were reconciled in Indonesia by the genius of Sambara Suryawarana, Mpu Prapanka, and Mpu Tantular. Topic. Further reading Parkin, Harry, 1978. Batak Fruit of Hindu. Madras, The Christian Literature Society. Zotmutter, P. J. Pantheism and Monism in Javanese Sulik Literature, Islamic and Indian Mysticism in an Indonesian Setting. Leiden, KITLV Press. ISSN 0074-0470. Islamic School The 10th-century process of Indianization of Indonesia was rivaled by the coming of Persian Sufism, and Sufism had begun to take root in the native philosophical discourse since the early 15th century onwards. 
The widespread practice of Sufism was encouraged by the massive founding of Islamic kingdoms and sultanates in Indonesia Nasser 1991 Kings and sultans like Sunan Jiri, Sunan Guningjati, Sunan Kudus, Sultan Trengono of Damak, Pakubawana II, Pakubawana IV, Sultan Aging Tirtayasa of Banten, Sultan Aladdin Riyayat Saya, Enku Haji Muda Raja Abdallah to Raja Muhammad Yusuf are Sufi kings, they learned Sufism from eminent Sufi teachers per Pustakan Nasional 2001-12-39, Sufism in Indonesia can be divided into two schools, Ghazalism and Ibn Arabism. Ghazalism takes its main inspiration from Al-Ghazali's teachings, whereas Ibn Arabism from Ibn Arabi's doctrines. Sufis from the Al-Ghazali line include Nuruddin al-Raniri, Abdurauf al-Sinkeli, Abd al-Shamid al-Palambangi, Saik Yusuf Makassar, while the Ibn Arabi line includes Hamza al-Fansori, al-Sumatrani, Saik Siddi Jenner, and so on Nasser 1991-282-287. Arabian Wahhabism was also adopted by King Pakubuwano IV and Tuanku Imam Banjal, who eradicated Sufism and encouraged Quran teachings instead Hamka 1971 When Islamic modernism, whose program was to synthesize Islamic teachings and Western Enlightenment philosophy, begun by Muhammad Abdu and Jamal al-Din al-Afghani in Egypt in the end of the 19th century, prevailed in all the Islamic world, Muslims in Indonesia also adopted and adapted modernism. This is clearly shown in the works of Sayyik Ahmad Khatib, Sayyik Thahir Jalaluddin, Abdul Karim Amrullah, Ahmad Dalin, Muhammad Natsir, Oemar Said Jokraminoto, Agus Salim, Misbak, and so forth Nor 1996 <laughs> <laughs> Further reading al Adiz, Syed M. Naqwab, 1970. The Mysticism of Hamza Fansori. Kuala Lumpur, University of Malaya University Press. Druze, G. W. J. 1986. The Poems of Hamza Fansori. Dordrecht Holland, Forrest. Zotmutter, P. J. Pantheism and Monism in Javanese Sulik Literature, Islamic and Indian Mysticism in an Indonesian Setting. Leiden, K. I. T. L. V. Press. ISSN 0074-0470. Topic. Western school When the Dutch colonial government in Indonesia implemented the ethical politics politic edis in the early 20th century, Dutch-style educational institutions mushroomed and were open for native children of noble, feudal classes who wanted to work in colonial institutions. The Dutch-speaking schools taught Western philosophy, among which Enlightenment philosophy was taught to Indonesian natives, much later than its 5th century emergence in Europe Lerope 1986 The alumni of these schools mostly continued their studies in European universities. They soon gathered as a newly emerging elite in Indonesia who comprised the first generation of European-style intelligentsia, and they later advocated Western philosophy instead of their original ethnic philosophies. Western philosophical traditions inspired most of modern Indonesian socio-political institutions. Indonesia's republic government, its constitution and distribution of power, its political parties and its long-term national economic planning were carried out on a Western model. Even its ideology of Pancasila unlike what Sokarno always boasted or what Soharto later established was inspired by Western ideals of humanism, social democracy, and the National Socialism of the Nazi Party, as clearly shown in the oration of BPUPKI members, a preparatory council of Indonesian independence in August, 1945 Risala Sidang 1995-10-79. This leads to a conclusion that modern Indonesia is founded on a Western blueprint. Even though the elite embraced Western philosophy wholeheartedly, they still felt the need to adapt the philosophy to concrete, contemporary Indonesian situations. For example, Sokarno, who adapted Western democracy to still feudalistic people, came up with his famous guided democracy Sokarno 1963 
D. N. Adit and Tan Malaka adapted Marxism Leninism to Indonesian situations. Adit 1964, IIV, Malaka 2000 to 45 minus 56, and Sudan Syarir adapted Social Democracy to the Indonesian context. Ray 1993 to 46. Topic. Further reading. Faith, Herbert, 1962. The Decline of Constitutional Democracy in Indonesia. Ithaca, Cornell University Press. Faith, Herbert, and Lance Castles eds. 1970. Indonesian Political Thinking, 1945–1955. Ithaca, Cornell University Press, CS1 maint, Multiple Names, Authors List link. Brackman, Arnold C. Indonesian Communism, A History. Westport, Greenwood Pub Group. ISBN 0-8371-8419-3. Christian School Together with the Western capitalist search for new colonies in the East, Christianity came to Indonesian merchants in the middle of the 15th century Lubis 1990-78. First Portuguese merchants then Dutch capitalists spread Catholicism and Calvinism respectively. Francis Xavier, the first Spanish Catholic preacher to go to Indonesia, translated Credo, Confession Generalis, Pater Noster, Ave Maria, Sav Regina, and the Ten Commandments into Malay between 1546 and 1547, through which Catholicism was propagated among the native people Lubis 1990-85. Catholic churches were established and Indonesian Catholics crowded, but soon they were expelled or forced to convert to Calvinism by Dutch Calvinists who came to Indonesia around 1596. Dutch Reformed churches were erected instead. Jan Pieterzoon Cohen, one of the governor-generals of VOC in 1618, was a good example of devout Calvinist. He put all Calvinist preachers in Dutch, under his control Lubis 1990-99. Portuguese-style Catholic schools and Dutch-style Calvinist educational institutions were open for Indonesian natives. Not only did they teach theology to the natives, but also Christian philosophy. One school later became thousands. There have been and still are, private Catholic and Protestant universities in which Christian philosophy is taught in Indonesia nowadays. Missionaries and preachers of the West who got master's degrees in philosophy from European universities came to lecture at Indonesian Christian universities From those universities graduated many who later mastered Christian philosophy, such as Nico Shukur Dister, J.B. Banawaratma, Robert J. Hardawiriana, J.B. Mangunwajaya, T.H. Sumartana, and so forth. Post-Soharto philosophy This school is mainly on the scene to criticize Soharto's socio-political policy during his presidency from 1966 to 1998. Its concern is political philosophy whose main task is to seek alternatives to the corrupt regime. This school dared to challenge Soharto after his silencing all philosophers by violence. Before this, there had been some who opposed Soharto in 1970s, but they were brutally assaulted in the incidents Peristiwa ITB Bandung 1973 and Peristiwa Malari 1974. Since then, philosophy could only be practiced in absentia or in secret. Under the new order, philosophy was repressed and reduced to ideas which officially supported the state. Philosophical praxis was effectively banned. With regard to philosophy, Soharto's era can be called an era of philosophical opium, in which all kinds of philosophy from every branch and school could live but could not be practiced in reality. Philosophy was pacified, reduced to a mere academic exercise and constrained in its content. In its stead, Soharto elevated Pancasila as an official state ideology, one selectively tailored to meet the needs of the new order Despite repression, some intellectuals began to publicly dissent and philosophize. They were known as post-Soharto philosophers, among which are, Sri Bintang Pamunkas, Butiman Sujatmiko, Muchtar Pakpahan, Sri Edi Swasono, and Pius Lustrilanang. References References in Indonesian 
In chronological order Sokarno Di Bawa Bendura Revolusi under the banner of revolution. Jakarta, Panitia Penerbatan. Nasroan, M. Falsafa Indonesia Indonesian philosophy. Jakarta, Penerbit Bulan Bintang. Hamka, 1971. Perkembangan Kabatinan di Indonesia The Development of Esotericism in Indonesia. Jakarta, Bulan Bintang. Alisjabana, S. Takdir, 1977. Perkembangan Sejara Kabudayan Indonesia Ditinjo Dari Jerusan Nilai Nilai Historical Development of Indonesian Kabudayan Seen from the Viewpoint of Values. Jakarta, Yayasan Ideu. Parmono, R. 1985. Mengali Unser Unser Filsafat Indonesia Digging Up Elements of Indonesian Philosophy. Yogyakarta, Andy Offset. Lerope, J. 1986. IPS Sejara, Historical Studies. Surabaya, Penerbit Palapa. Sunoto, 1987. Menuju Filsafat Indonesia Towards Indonesian Philosophy. Yogyakarta, Hanandita Offset. Suryatanata, Leo, 1990. Menkari Identitas Nasional, Dari Tjoe Bo San Sampai Yap Tiam Heen Seeking National Identity, From Tjoe Bo San to Yap Tiam Heen. Jakarta, LP3ES. BPUPKI, 1995. Risala Sidang Badan Penyelidik USAHA USAHA Persiapan Kemerdekan Indonesia BPUPKI and Panitia Persiapan Kemerdekan Indonesia PPKI Proceedings of BPUPKI and PPKI Meetings. Jakarta, Sekretaris Negara Republik Indonesia. Noor, Delier, 1996. Jerikan Modern Islam di Indonesia 1900-1942 The Muslim Modernist Movement in Indonesia 1900-1942. Jakarta, LP3ES. Malacca, Tan, 2000. AKSI Massa Mass Action. Jakarta, Sadi and Alianzi Press. Perpustakan Nasional Republik Indonesia 2001. Pengaru Islam Terhadap Budaya Jawa dan Sabaliknya, Seri Clipping Perpustakan Nasional Dalam Berita Vol. 2 No. 1 Clips about the Islam influence on Javanese culture and vice versa. Jakarta, Sub Bajian Humas Perpustakan Nasional Re. Sumerjo, Yaakob, 2003. Menkari Sukma Indonesia Seeking the Indonesian Soul. Yogyakarta, AK Group. Hidayat, Ferry, 2004. Sketsa Sejara Filsafat Indonesia A Historical Sketch of Indonesian Philosophy, Unpublished Paper. Hidayat, Ferry, 2005. Pengantar Menuju Filsafat Indonesia An Introduction to the Indonesian Philosophy, Unpublished Paper. Topic references in English Alice Jabana, S. Takdir, 1961. Indonesia in the Modern World, translated into English by Benedict R. Anderson. New Delhi, Prabhakar Padya. Adit, D. N. 1964. The Indonesian Revolution and the Immediate Tasks of Communist Party of Indonesia. Peking, Foreign Languages Press. High Earth, Fingar, 1983. Philosophers in Indonesia, Southeast Asian Monograph Series No. 12. Townsville, James Cook University of North Queensland. ISBN 0-86443-083-3. Sardisay, D. R. 1989. Southeast Asia, Past and Present. San Francisco, Westview Press. Lubis, Mokhtar, 1990. Indonesia, Land Under the Rainbow. Singapore, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-588977-0. Nasser, Syed Hossein, 1991. Islamic Spirituality II, Manifestations. New York, Crossroad. Ray, Lindsay, 1993. Sutan Syarir and the Failure of Indonesian Socialism. In McIntyre, Angus. Indonesian Political Biography, In Search of Cross-Cultural Understanding. Victoria, Monash University, Center of Southeast Asian Studies. pp. 43-121. ISSN 0727-6680.